In these economic uncertain times, many of our favorite blue chip stocks are on sale, and some of these sales are worthy of the good old bargain bin. Hold on to your seatbelts, folks. This is going to be a good one. It is never fun to watch the markets trend more to the red than, of course, to the green. However, it is in the red markets that money is made because it can be an opportunity to buy some of our favorite blue chip stocks at a sizable discount. You have all more than likely heard the key to being successful on the market is to buy low and sell high. Well, these red periods are those lows that saying is referring to. On the long term, you will make some nice profits from buying in a depressed market. For those using the tried and true dollar cost averaging method, this is when those buys feel absolutely fantastic. The huge advantage the DCA folks have right now is that you are still buying as per your buy schedule, so you're getting these deals while some, though not all, non-DCA folks are sitting on the sidelines with their cash hoping things will get worse before buying. Unfortunately, that can be a risky play as the market doesn't announce the bottom before it changes its trend back to the green. Some, of course, will of course get lucky and make the guess at the right point. When you take a long-term outlook, the profits from the deals today will look almost as impressive as the ones from the bottom, or if we are in the bottom, they could be the best we're gonna get. Join the conversation. Let us know in the comments if you think the bottom is in. Your participation is of course well appreciated. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date on future content and a huge thank you for that click. We, as usual, have a few qualifiers for today's list. This one is different in that we are not looking for those big returns, but we are looking for some nice looking negatives. For this list, we only looked at companies with market caps that exceed 25 billion, and I believe all of these companies are actually over 30 billion. I did limit the banks, though, to a single entry, as otherwise, they would have taken up more than one spot. No worries, though, I have a little extra for you when we do get to the bank on this list. These companies are ranked by how far from their three-year high their current value is. So, I am sure many of you can guess which Canadian company is taking the top spot. You will have to let me know in the comments if you figured it out, well, before you get to it. Without any further ado, let's do this. Kicking off this list, we have TELUS with a ticker of T. TELUS is, of course, one of Canada's big three telecommunications companies, and they are on sale in the last three years. They peaked at $34.42 per share, which currently makes them 37.74% off of their three-year high. They have a market cap of $32.01 billion. Their beta is pretty stable. It comes in at 0.69. Their earnings per share come in at 0.82, and they have a price-to-earnings ratio of 26.98. That return on equity, that does come in at 7.22%. Their debt to equity ratio, a little high at 155.24%. Now, when we look, of course, at dividends, they have a dividend yield of 6.575%, which is awesome for a blue chipper. That is a quarterly dividend. It's paid out in the amount of 36.4 cents per share. Now, their payout ratio, a little concerning. It is high at 171.27%. Of course, when we look at these returns, we're hoping for some negative values. Their three-year return on investment, that comes in at negative 3.35%. We add in their pretty nice looking dividends though, and it does bring that total return up to 14.81%. On the one year, their return on investment comes in at negative 26.63%, and they have a total return of negative 20.16% after we factor in the dividends. And year to date, their return on investment comes in at negative 18.90% with a total return return after we add in the dividends of negative 12.43%. So we can see most of TELUS's falling have been in the last year. This is one of those companies that people are always asking me if it is time to buy. They are in the bargain bin, so let your due diligence take a hard look at that. Coming in at number four, we have the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce with a ticker of CM. Honestly, most of the big six banks could have made this list, but CM was just a wee bit more off their three-year high than the others. They peaked at $82.59, making them 41.11% off that high. Their market cap, that comes in at $32.78 billion, and they have a pretty average beta of 1.03. Their earnings per share come in at 3.57, and they have a price-to-earnings ratio of 9.94. That return on equity, that comes in at 9.45%, and their debt-to-equity ratio, it's high, 393%. Keep in mind, banks, because of the nature of that business, tend to carry pretty high debt 
to equity ratio, so that's not as scary as it looks. Their yield, pretty darn impressive, coming in at 7.155%. That, of course, is quarterly, 87 cents per share. They have a pretty good payout ratio of 69.53%. When we look at their returns on the three-year, their return on investment comes in at negative 2.78%. You factor in some of their dividends and we get a total return that actually looks good at 27.64%. On the one year, their return on investment comes in at negative 22.08% and they get a total return after we factor in the dividends of negative 15.05%. On the year to date, their return on investment comes in at negative 13.57%. Adding in the dividends, we do get a total return of negative 8.29%. I know people are going to be wondering about the other five of the big six banks and how far they were off their three-year highs. Well, you don't have to wonder any longer. Scotiabank was off by 39.29%. BMO was off by 30.21%. TD was off by 27%. Royal Bank was off by 24.61%. And National Bank did the best. They were only off by 19.2%. Taking our third spot, we have Nutrien with a ticker of NTR. They are the world's biggest fertilizer producer by capacity. In their three years, they did peak at $141.52, and they are now 42.43% off of that three-year high. They have a market cap of $40.29 billion. Their beta, very average, at 0.98. Their earnings per share comes in at 9.90. Price-to-earnings ratio, that comes in at 8.23, and they have a return on equity of 14.31%. Their debt-to-equity ratio, not too bad, at 53.5%. When we look at their yield, that comes in at 3.472%. It is a quarterly dividend in the amount of 53 cents USD per share. They have a pretty low payout ratio of 27.98%. Let's take a look at their return on investment. Now their three year looks absolutely fantastic as their return on investment comes in at 33.48%. Adding in the dividends, we get 41.15%. That's not too shabby. Now, of course, we know it's about to go downhill from here. On the one-year return on investment, that comes in at negative 32.57%. Factoring in the dividends, we do get a total return of negative 30.03%. And year-to-date, their return on investment comes in at negative 22.31% for a total return after dividends are factored in of negative 19.77%. This is a company I do believe will bounce back big time, as that demand for growing food is not about to go away. In our almost top spot at number two, we have Newport Corporation with a ticker of NGT. They are a huge gold producer, and they also mine lead, silver, zinc, and of course copper. On the three-year, they peaked at $106.72, making them currently 50.13% off that three-year high. They have one of the larger market caps in today's list of 42.30 billion. They have a super stable beta of 0.43. Now, their earnings per share is in the negative. It is coming in at negative 1.33. We do not have a price to earnings ratio as a lot of companies do not report them when their EPS is in the negative. Their return on investment, it's still positive. It comes in at 11.49% and they have a really nice looking debt to equity ratio of 31.48%. When it comes to their dividends, they have a dividend yield of 3.957%. That is paid out quarterly in the amount of 40 cents USD per share. Their payout ratio, that comes in at 180.33%. When we look at their returns, these are not going to be good. That three-year return on investment comes in at negative 58.31%. Add in the dividends and it's still pretty bad at negative 46.56%. On the one year, that return on investment comes in at negative 8.36%. Factoring in the dividends, we do get a negative 5.07%. They have taken another bit of a hit this year, so year to date, their return on investment's coming in at negative 24.11%, and they've got a total return after you factor in those dividends of negative 21.85%. This is a company, in my opinion, that should already be doing better. I do hold high expectations for them going forward, and I would certainly love to see this start to turn around sooner than later. In our top spot at number one, we have, did you guys guess it? 
Shopify with a ticker of SHOP. Shopify is a huge online retail point of sale giant. They had a three year high of $213.54, and that current price is a massive 67.17% off the three year mark. They have a very nice looking market cap of $88.99 billion, and their beta is pretty much twice as volatile as the market average at 2.06. Their earnings per share, once again, we got another negative, negative 2.08, and they also did not report a price to earnings ratio because of that negative EPS. Their return on equity, this one is negative as well, negative 25.04%. Normally, a negative return on investment makes me run for the hills, but this may be an exception. Their debt to equity ratio, really good, 15.20%. Shopify is the only ones on this list today who do not have a dividend. So their three year return on investment was a whopping negative 77.29%. That is massive. They fell big time, but here's the beautiful thing. They've already started recovering. So their one year return on investment, that's coming in at 43.11%. And year to date, the return on investment is 30.40%. Shopify has already begun to recover, as we can see clearly in their one year and year to date returns. This is a company that has recently flipped a major competitor, we're talking about you, Amazon, into a more collaborative relationship. This could be one to watch for sure. These are some awesome companies, and they are really some pretty good opportunities for some very nice future growth. However, they are not going to recover overnight. And if you are buying these or any other on sale stock, you need to be, well, you need to be patient. It could take a year or maybe even longer to start seeing the returns blossom on some stocks like these. I also need to caution you that even though these are blue chip companies, there is never a 100% guarantee of their success. The probability is very, very high for sure, but it is not 100%. So if you are interested on any of these sales, be sure to still throw in a heaping helping of due diligence before you throw your hard-earned money onto the table. Keep the learning going. Watch my video on Element de Jean Couchetard or test YouTube's recommendation skills by checking out the video on the right. Your choice will decide the winner and I will see you in the next video.